Why pro athletes go broke after they make five mil? Let's talk about that. Why, uh, let's look at that clip. Why pro athletes go broke after they make five mil. Let's take a look at this. You see a guy making $5 million, taxes, you're going to take 50-something percent of that. Yeah. And then your agent takes 5%. You're, you're down about. to one eight. Yeah. Your wife wants a car. You want to help your mom <laughs> out. Something. Yeah, everything yeah. adds up. And then you're stuck with these insurance payments, the house payment, the utility bill for an 8,000-square-foot house. And those bills add up. And eventually, like you said, you know, your income stops. Should the game provide money management? They're starting to do like a rookie symposium. Like I went to it, and it was like the first year they were doing it. And I thought it was terrible because I was there to, to learn about money. I understand the media. Yeah. Talk to people, interviews, great. Help me with manage my money. There was nothing for uh -huh. it. Okay, so what's the first thing an NFL player should learn about money? Don't spend it. Don't spend it. And the the first thing I, I would say is if you're going to invest, invest in yourself in the education of finances. So should I be in an apartment, have some roommates with other draft picks, other rookies? No. I think you should live close to the facility and you should live in a nice town home because you, you, if you're a first rounder, it all depends. So if you're coming out and you're making 60 million, that's different than a, a six, seven rounder who has to manage off of sure. basic salary. And that's like, majority of the league. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. And um, most of them go broke because they feel like that NFL title gives everyone the right to live like a millionaire. So you're around all these guys yeah. that you thought you should have been first round. You thought you, so the little money you got, you buying this car that you know you shouldn't have or, or different things. But I don't believe NFL players are, bro they might be broken, but I don't think they're broke. You know what I'm saying? You, they might have a moment of cash flow issues because most people that are broke has no influence. Yeah. So now they just have to recalibrate and they have to come back and change the way they think re-educate themselves, and they're already built on a, pl a foundation that is ready to be built upon. Rookie minimum salary is $750,000. Next year, increase to the 870 and if they have yeah. uh, more experience. With two more experience, they have 940. So I'm basically a millionaire. Yeah, but they weren't when I played. <laughs> that was like 250, 300,000 yeah. was the minimum. Gotcha. You know, so right now, and it's all relevant, yeah. right? When I was playing, they were saying guys' contracts like Walter Payton contract. It was nothing yeah. to compare to, but price of milk wasn't the same back sure. when they put. Everything is all relevant. So right. just guarantee the contracts and guys won't go broke. Gotcha. Uh, next clip, uh, Jordan, why professional athletes do go broke? Don't have financial literacy, your ass will go broke no matter how much money you make. This is why we see professional athletes, boxers, football players, basketball players, baseball, it doesn't matter who. They will get 15, 20 million dollar purses like Holyfield right now lives in an apartment. Evander fucking Holyfield lives in an apartment in Philadelphia and is barely getting by. The dude was getting multiple millions of dollars per fight because he was surrounded by yes men, but no one took the time to teach him financial literacy. So that he would have some assets and i think for him too as well i mean you've been through a lot of divorces right so so how do, how do you what's the discernment there with holyfield and picking the right woman in your life oh that I, i'm learning that now man that that has everything to do with everything um because it can cost you you know what i'm saying so i think the education of everything is what i've been learning about because uh, I've had my own financial differences uh, with uh, being asset rich, cash poor in those moments. But I, Les Brown helped me with that you're not broke, you're just going through a cash flow issue. And when I recognized that, I learned that there's a pivot, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And I think most guys go broke because they don't want to admit. And the more they don't admit, I need help, the bleeding keeps going. But you have a lot of different assets, a lot of different things you could leverage. A vendor shouldn't be living in a... In, that means you got to submit somewhere or humble yourself. You got too many relationships. Yeah. You've helped too many people along the way. Sure. So I just think with the right humility, vulnerability is a big thing and it's scary to a lot of guys that it happens. Man, your, your life is not over just because you, you, your numbers start. I walked in a bank when I got my second contract. And I asked these people, they, I, just, I was the first to ever be paid $10 million per season at my position in the NFL, in mm -hmm. the history of the NFL. I walk in there next week to my same bank I've been with. I had to be probably about 24, and I got to my new deal. I built a relationship with this bank. 
we were learning about finances. They knew I was a young boy from Colleen, Texas, who didn't <laughs> know. And we had an honest relationship. I'm, they were, we were teaching, learning. So I come in after my new deal. They congratulated me when I came in the private bank. It's a big bank in yeah, Chicago. Yeah, for sure. I walk in there, and um, I'm asking my my, uh, my attendant. I say, uh, Yvette, I say, let me see. Ask the president, can they put $10 million in one uh, room and let me come see it? Yeah. She said, what? I said, <laughs> I said, ask me, can they put 10 million in one room and let me go see it? She, she got up, she said, hey. She called the vice president, she said, hey, Tommy wants 10 million in one room, sir. So he could uh, In the vault. He said, what? <laughs> Everybody started laughing at me. I said, what's so funny? I said, what is so funny? They said, Tommy, we don't hold that much money in a bank. We can't just bring Tim in and cash in no bank. I said, so I'm supposed to believe because my number flipped from last week to this week, I'm supposed to act different? Yes, Tommy. So when people numbers go down, that's why they be mad? Yes, Tommy. Mm. Yeah. Mine yeah. never been predicated. I come from nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't identified and tied to a dollar It's amount. never a dollar. You can't make, yeah. my dad always made, money don't make you. There you, go. you know what I mean? Like, I don't care how much money you got. A butthole comes in all colors. I just try to stay away from the stinky ones. <laughs> but, but they all stink, though. <laughs> you right. Tell me a good smelling butthole. I mean, I don't Stop know. Stop it. <laughs> it it's, but look at this. Let's look, look, let's look at the screen here real quick. <laughs> this is Evander getting help from uh, uh, my screen here, uh, Jordan. Uh, this is Evander getting help from Marco Simonis and uh, uh, Alex Rodriguez. I think he was on a reality show to get him back on his financial feet. Yeah. It's so so he's getting some coaching. He's getting some counsel. I don't know what the follow-up to this. It was a couple years ago. Um, but, but do you think it's fair that every person should care? Like, is, is financial literacy not like forcing someone to read? You need to read. And if you don't read it, then you are not going to get what you... Well, what if I don't want... What if I don't like reading? Is that saying stay in your position? Stay in your hurting place? What if this has never been... And you're talking about African-American boys who have not been okay. schooled yeah, yeah. or not been... Like, we don't... You don't know if you're going to live tomorrow. So you want to go buy that chain, yeah. buy that car, get that... So you tell me, sit down and talk about your future. And uh -huh. what future? I'm just getting comfortable where I can lay down at night. Your whole work. life was lit up to this moment. That's right. That's it, yeah. It's tough. And now you got people telling you you're going to be a stupid athlete that retired and you're but I don't really now you this is the big problem too. Most most athletes go broke because you trust the wrong financial people. Boom. It's who advising you yeah. is it, you have to really do more of a due diligence on who you allow to advise your money. You're a fan of the same boat. Yes sir. You're a fan of the same boat. So sadly, he trusted the wrong guy. Yeah. His whole entire career of running track. That's sad. Gone. Gone. Wrong guys he trusted in uh, Jamaica because it wasn't secured size like it is in America. And it's really catch me if you can. Yeah. Once your money's yeah. gone, nobody's feeling sorry you're an athlete yeah. that got your money stolen and yeah. taken away from you because you trusted these people yeah. while you were doing your art and your yeah. skill and they said they had your back. Yeah. And then you come back after you finish and realize your whole bank has been robbed. Mike, that looks crazy on it. You can have all the financial lists in the world. Do you have a checklist of uh, advisors? Like if, if these are some of the things I look for, otherwise they're a red flag. They're not my coach, they're my, my financial coach, they're not my business advisor. Yeah, at this point, yes. You, my, anybody who buys my money has to make more than me. Okay. You, you, I for don't sure. want to talk to some, because I'm, <laughs> some, some I'm just paying your bill to be in front of me. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have more money, I want to be with guys that have more where I can shoot. Yeah. For the mark, if you're not checking in with me, or, yeah. or or I can't get in contact with you daily, or we build a rapport on how to move, like yeah. I pay my guy, uh, I don't know, in the middle of, I got drafted in 2004, so 2008 was that big hit. Um, when I retired, big hit meaning big big uh, uh, recession. Oh, I got you. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I forgot okay. you were very technical. Yeah, I get you. Because yeah. <laughs> um, you're a football player. I was like, what a hit. <laughs> no, so uh, yeah, like in 2008, um, I, I after I retired, I recognized. Uh, I knew I didn't know what we were in. When you mm -hmm. have a lot of money, recessions aren't really real. You're not. The people are going off to, on their boats. Life sure. is still happening. As yeah. if you can ignore it. Right, that's what wealth allows you the opportunity. You can ignore what's happening and yeah. things. But after the end of my career, I recognized that my financial advisor didn't make me any money and he didn't lose me any money. And kind of like 
But all yeah. I did was pay him over 180 every year to and manage fees. my money. And still I could have just saved with a regular bank and did yeah. you, you without see paying the fees. And then I, I, my same advisor was advising another teammate of my, a, a player of mine that played on another team that I knew, and he would bring his spreadsheet compared to mine. Yeah. And his was way over, like he was making big time money. Yeah. But he was risking a lot, and he told me not to risk. And I was only doing what he told me to do. Gotcha. But this guy was telling him what he wanted him to do with his money. So I'm gonna tell anyone that's going in this position, these people work for you. That's right. So you gotta have, you gotta seek education, okay. seek other people around you that know more about this, and, and just do your due diligence. Um, let's go to the next clip. Jordan, three athletes who are terrible with their money. Because sometimes you learn more. And then after that, after that, we'll go with uh, the Kobe to wrap up. Here are three athletes who are terrible with their money. Number one is Mike Tyson. So Iron Mike earned over $400 million during his boxing career. And in early 2003, he declared bankruptcy. So where did all the money go? It went from limousines to Siberian tigers to just blowing it left and right. And Mike Tyson claims that crooked promoters didn't help. In fact, he sued his previous promoter, Don King, for $100 million claiming that Don King cheated him out of tens of millions of dollars over the years. Number two is Antoine Walker. Antoine Walker earned yeah, over $108 million during his 13-year NBA career. It was said that he never wore the same designer suit twice. He was lending financial support to over 70 friends and family. And in 2010, he filed for bankruptcy after writing $1 million bad checks. Number three is Terrell Owens. T.O. made over $80 million during his playing career, but in 2012, he also filed for bankruptcy. Some of the things that he cited were bad investing habits, the housing market crisis, and paying over $50,000 per month in child support. Uh, yeah. that'll, that'll do it. That'll yeah. do it. Uh, it, it's funny, I, I, the, the three I was mentioned there, we've actually had conversation with two of them. Um, looking forward to having a conversation with T.O. Iron Mike, he had bad wiring. He thinks everybody's in his life because of his money. So the, if he said, if I just get rid of my money, bad people will stop coming to my life. That's his, that's his identity. Mm -hmm. it's, that's the way he mm -hmm. correlates money mm -hmm. of having bad people in his life. And then um, who was the second one there? Was, uh, um, who was the second one there? Uh, oh, a uh, uh, basketball player. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 Antoine Walker. Mm -hmm. We interviewed him at um, a cigar lounge in Chicago, and he, like what you're saying, he I trusted the wrong Walk. guy. Yeah, he trusted the wrong guy to yeah. manage his properties. Yeah, but Walk also, both of the, all three of those people you looked at, you're never going to give, even Holyfield. If you go over their life, they are all givers. Sure. They were all sure. givers. That's the yeah. part that the world is missing yeah. right now. Like, yeah. you're being punished for being pure as a giver. These guys didn't just take limousine. They took children out with cancer on their last night. Antoine Walker would take the whole South Side of, and mm -hmm. give kids mm -hmm. an experience, pay for people houses that didn't have home. Yeah. That's the When you're an African-American athlete, that money belongs to us. When you make it, if your if your hood was behind you or whatever had to protect you, that, you're not just coming back home by it. You didn't make it by yourself, and that's the whole thing that a lot of guys have to work through at this point. Like starting to separate from the crowd and learning how to do better jobs at setting up ways to give, not just giving. Cat, there's ways. There's smarter so ways to earn it. That's that earn it. There's uh, starting a business. Yeah. Or even yeah. the guys that's living with you from day one when you yeah. bring them to stay with you in this new city, yeah. put them to work. Yep. Yep. Get show on taxes that you're paying them a position. Just like LeBron. LeBron did everything in a business oh, movement. Man, These we weren't just homeboys. It's a company. Yeah. So that's what guys need to understand now. When you're getting drafted, you're coming out the gate as a business. Yeah. And you need to act as one. Right. And if you're not doing your job as part of the crew, you gotta go. Yeah. You know, you gotta so go. Right now, we'll see you when, when yeah. it slows down. Come back though. Yeah. Come back if though. You, when you if improve. you prepare, if yeah. you're ready. You improve. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I think a lot of those guys um, didn't have those checks and balances to say, if I'm going to put you on payroll, if I'm going to give you money, here's how you're going to earn it to as well. And the downside to them being a giver is that the people that they gave money to, where are they now? Right. Where are they now? That's big. So, uh, Be um, careful who you, you're right. Yeah, with Walk, good, thank goodness that uh, I think it was Northwestern Mutual, they, they have him on salary. So he tours all the different college campuses to advise the college students about money. Northwest. So, not Northwestern uh, uh, Mutual. Mutual Life Insurance Company. 
So they get them touring to all the – because they're an NCAA uh, uh, sponsor. Mm-hmm. So they got them going to all the different colleges to educate the uh, college students, the, the student athletes about, about finance. So so good on a walk with that. Uh, so he's got that going on. Um, let's go wrap up this podcast uh, with this with this uh, stud. And uh, he spoke at our conference, uh, sadly, three months after that he, he passed away. But uh, – Mm-hmm. Kobe, uh, he Kobe, oh, he's, he's uh, he was backstage with us. I'm like, Kobe, wait, wait, why are you doing business with us? He goes, I like, what are you doing? He goes, I just smell on you guys. You guys are obsessors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I only do business That's with right. obsessors. And uh, I said, Kobe, do it again. So I, I recorded. <laughs> it's on my IG. It's got, it's got one of, my, one of those reels. And so I just never thought that three months later he passed away. Man. Unbelievable. You person. Know? So let's take a look at what Kobe said here post career. What are you supposed to do? Retire. You don't have that source of income that's coming in, right? So even if you save over a 15-year career, if your spending habits remain the same, eventually that well's going to run dry, right? So unfortunately for us athletes, retirement age is 32, 34. If you're lucky, 37 like myself. What comes next, right? So the question needs to be, what comes next? What can I do? What is my passion? Not where I can create the most value or generate the most revenue, but what is my next passion? When you find that next passion, then everything else will make sense. So my question to you, Tommy, by the way, fruitful advice? I worked with him. Did you? Yeah, I've awesome. had the Players' Tribune. I wow, worked for awesome. him, him and uh, really? Drita. That's great. Mm-hmm. What's, what's uh, as, as we send you off, Tommy, I appreciate your grace in our podcast, but your time, your hey, investing time you. in the Millinger Mil- 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 podcast. Man. What's Tommy's next passion? Passion. Uh, my passion right now is just um, uh, encouraging others uh, along my journey of um, – mental health, uh, to navigate a, um, a, a place, a, a safe space for men. I, I'm just encouraging. I, I love encouraging men, and I feel like it's a huge need in this time. And it also helps me. It, it feels like um, I'm doing my part, and it gives me something to wake up out of bed to know that I'm not the only one that's sitting here going through something, dealing with something, but to encourage myself daily to be an inspiration to someone else who's on the verge of quitting or giving up to never ever quit yeah. and to make it in your mind that that it's it's not an option quitting is not an option and this is what it's all about showing up every day and encouraging others that's what, my passion what's your word of encouragement to, to young men coming up right now and and there's so much distractions coming their way i mean uh, uh so many different social things we have to navigate we were talking about earlier and some things we have to navigate things we can say not say what's what's your message to young men today uh, first, my message to young men today is stay away from women that aren't ticklish. Uh, the second thing that I would say to them is to, man, take this opportunity in life um, to not waste it and, and to really to hear it from me at my version of myself at 39. I'll be 40 at the end of this month. And uh, to just thank God for be grateful, man, to find gratitude in whatever you're doing. But please don't waste it and your life matters man you deserve to be here you don't have to look for a purpose because god doesn't make mistakes that means you're on purpose and just continue to walk every day uh, and to get better and better each day that's the mission so if you like that clip please watch this one right here if you want to see the full podcast click right here